So I don't know if any of you have noticed by now, but for the most part I make videos about like teen rom-coms, cheesy adult rom-coms, cheesy teen drama rom-coms where the main guy's like British or whatever and he always says stuff like, I see the real you, like that actually means anything. But every now and then I like to change things up. And one show that's been all over my Twitter mentions, my YouTube comments, just everywhere for the past like month or two is Anne with an E. Now this show's a pretty big departure from my usual stuff, but I figured at the very least it'd be a good idea to kind of see what else is out there besides Riverdale, you know what I mean? So let's check it out. But before that, really quick, this video is sponsored by Audible. If you don't know what Audible is by now, Audible is an online service that lets you download audiobooks, audio newspapers, and just like all kinds of spoken word entertainment. Right now, if you sign up with my link, audible.com slash Alex Myers, or text my name, Alex Myers, to 500-500, you can get a 30-day free trial where you get one free audiobook and two Audible original programs. Now, Audible originals are exactly what they sound like. Audiobooks are some kind of like audio entertainment thing that you can't find anywhere else, or exclusive versions of books like The Adventures of Tom Sawyer read by Nick Offerman, for example. And once you've signed up, you continue to get one free audiobook regardless of price and two more Audible originals every month for just 15 bucks. Now, a lot of these audiobooks are between 15 and like $30 anyway, so you're actually saving quite a bit of money by signing up. And here's the thing, whatever audiobooks you download, even the free one you get with the 30-day free trial, you get to keep forever, even if you cancel the membership. So like, you literally have nothing to lose. As always, I would recommend The Power of Habit because almost everything we do, from sleeping to eating to studying to making YouTube videos, everything comes down to our habits. And by understanding and changing those habits, really you can do almost anything. So once again, sign up with my link, audible.com slash Myers, or text my name Alex Myers to 500 500 start your 30 day free trial get your free audio I mean come on okay back to the show we start off with this older gentleman here Mr. Cuthbert as he arrives at the local train station which is a pretty big deal you know because like most people back in the 1890s he's pretty busy spending all of his time looking constipated while also trying not to die from dysentery which was like a full-time job back then in and of itself now Mr. Cuthbert is surprised and a little perturbed at the moment because he was expecting to meet up with a little boy that day oh <laughs> I should probably uh, rewrite that sentence but instead, all he sees at the station is this. Oh, I suppose you are Matthew Cuthbert of Green Gables. Well, I'm very glad to see you. I was beginning to be afraid that you weren't coming, and I was imagining all the things that might have happened to prevent you. I'd made up my mind that if you didn't come for me, I'd go down the track to that big wild cherry tree and climb up into it and stay all night. So this girl is named Anne, spelled with an E, just in case you hadn't figured it out for yourself. And something you need to know about Anne, besides that she shops exclusively in anthropology, is that she's an orphan who's been kind of like passed around from house to house. She's kind of like the macaroni grill gift card of kids, you know, just getting regifted every three months, because like, why would you eat there on purpose? But Mr. Cuthbert over here, who lives alone with his bah humbug sister, wanted to adopt a child to help on the farm. But thanks to the magic of happenstance, Anne is the only kid that showed up. And also one more thing you need to know is that Anne over here never shuts up. A bride all in white with a misty veil. I never expect to be a bride myself. I'm so homely. Nobody would ever want to marry me. But I do hope someday I shall have a white dress with, with beautiful puff sleeves. It is my highest ideal of our sleepless. Am I talking too much? I mean, this is like when you go on a date with one of those girls who likes to label themselves as quirky, and the whole time they're just telling you about their favorite Jonas Brothers fanfic and like doing finger guns or whatever, and you're just desperately trying to figure out which thing on the menu was most likely to give you food poisoning the fastest. Anyway, so this continues and just keeps on going, and we get to maybe one of my favorite lines in any TV show. What color would you call this? It's red, isn't it? Yes, it's red. Now you see why I can't be perfectly happy. Nobody could who has red hair. It's my lifelong sorrow. <laughs> Yeah, I just love the idea that this disdain for redheads has just apparently existed throughout all time. Even back like a hundred years ago, Anne's greatest sorrow is looking like Ginny Weasley. But then, finally, after Anne's told us about everything we never wanted to know about her, they finally arrive at Green Gables, where they meet Mr. Cuthbert's sister, named Miss Cuthbert, oddly enough, who also isn't too thrilled about this little turn of events. We want a boy to help Matthew with the farm work. A girl would be of no use to us, do you understand? I can't say that I do. Couldn't I do the farm chores even though I'm a girl? That's not the way of things and you know it. It doesn't make sense that girls aren't allowed to do farm work when girls can do anything a boy can do. It. Oh really, is that so, Anne with an E? All right, try peeing your name in the snow. See how far you get with that. Mm-hmm, slam dunk. But yeah, so Miss Cuthbert's also a little perturbed because obviously only boys can do outside work and all they have now is this random girl who just talks about trees for 10 hours a day. So everyone's kind of confused about what's going on here and as you can imagine, is feeling a little disappointed and sad or as she puts it,
Well, you're not eating at all. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm in the depths of despair. <laughs> Okay, and whatever you say. Although, to be fair, I said pretty much the exact same thing back when I was like a freshman in high school, and I gave a senior girl a note that said, Will you go out with me? Checkbox yes or yes. And then she drew a dirt box and said no. And the whole rest of the week, I was just like, I'm in the depths of despair. Happiness is an illusion. I have become the darkness. Uh huh. So you want mashed potatoes or not? Anyway, so the next day, Miss Cuthbert takes Anne and they head off to bring her back to somewhere and figure out what happened to the boy they were supposed to get. You take care now. Oh, for heaven's sake. My brother is a ridiculous man. I think he's lovely. He's ever so sympathetic and he didn't seem to mind how much I talked. But, as usual, Anne just keeps on talking about all kinds of who knows what, and eventually, the conversation drifts over into how she became an orphan. My parents were Walter and Bertha Shirley. They were newlyweds, and they were poor as church mice. They died of a fever when I was three months old. You know, this is why I think it's always kind of funny when you see those people on the internet talking about how they were like born in the wrong generation or whatever. Like they watch Pride and Prejudice or something and they're like, everything was so much better back then. Completely ignoring the fact that people used to die just like if the wind changed direction. Anyway, so Miss Cuthbert takes Anne over to this lady's house who's involved with a local orphanage somehow, I guess. And then this lady takes Anne over to another lady's house who's looking for some help with her like 25 kids. And things aren't looking so good for our little human podcast over here. If I take Take you, you'll do as I say and speak when spoken to. And if I find you lacking, you'll know the toe of my boot. I expect you to earn your keep and no mistake. Anne has worked for large families before. And work she will. This ain't no charity house. Well, I, d I don't know. I... I didn't say Matthew and I had absolutely decided we wouldn't keep her. And just like that, Miss Cuthbert's heart grows three sizes that day, and she takes Anne back to her house to have another talk with her brother about maybe sort of kind of keeping Anne around, you know what I'm saying? And guess who's a little excited about this? Thank you to keep your questions to yourself till we can speak in private. Run along inside. Put your bag upstairs and put the kettle on. Yes, Miss Cuthbert. Oh, wipe that silly grin off your face. So what ends up happening is they put Anne on a five-day trial to see what it's actually going to be like, you know, to live with a girl who constantly looks and acts like if you just used every Snapchat filter all at once. And there's this whole thing where Anne meets one of their neighbors who says, Well... They didn't pick you for your looks. That's sure and certain. And then Anne's just like, that's a whole thing. And just a whole bunch of random adventures and stuff until the very end of the episode, Anne is playing with this fancy brooch thing that Miss Cuthbert got from her grandma. And guess what happens? Where is my brooch? It should be there on your shawl. It is not. Nor is it in my jewelry box. Did you take it? Give it back. Right now. But I didn't take it, Miss Cuthbert. I told you that brooch meant a great deal to me. I didn't take your brooch. I don't know I where. I can't trust one word out of your mouth. Please. Tomorrow you will go. But the next morning after Anne's taken away, wouldn't you know, Miss Cuthbert finds the brooch stuck between the chair cushions and realizes she kicked Anne out of the house for no reason. So Mr. Cuthbert gets on his horse and races after the train a la Back to the Future 3, but he's too late. But I miss it. I miss the train. Well, not to worry. You gotta go on, all right? But then there's like 26 more episodes, so I'm sure it's fine. Now, as you probably surmised by this point, and with an E is a relatively simple show, a 13-year-old orphan girl gets adopted by a family who looks like they should probably eat a little more fiber, and they have all kinds of wacky 1890s adventures. You know, like going to school or learning how to deal with boys, like... And fun fact, it's actually been nominated for and won quite a few awards over the last couple years. But, as seems to be the pattern, the show was suddenly cancelled by the Canadian Broadcasting Company just out of nowhere after the third season. And the reasoning for this was just hilarious to me. According to them, they cancelled the show because of a lack of audience growth in the 25 to 54 age range. Wait a second, you're telling me that a show about a 13 to 16 year old girl might not be popular with 50 year olds? Huh. Well, golly gee. But I'll say this, okay? In a world where everything is superpowers and extended cinematic universes or whatever, and with an E, is really a breath of fresh air. You know what I mean? You know, like I said earlier in the video, I've been asked by a lot of people to do a video about Anne with an E. And then once the cancellation happened, like, everyone around the, the everywhere was just like, you, you gotta do a video, man. You know, like, it's such a far departure from what I usually do. Because, like, even if I do stuff that's not teen-related, it's usually still, like, Jane the Virgin or maybe a superhero thing or whatever. Like, it's still kind of within this, like, modern-day 
you know, teen show ecosphere or whatever it is. But Anne with an E is like so separated from everything else I usually do. But thankfully, I think the video turned out pretty good. One thing that strikes me is, is odd is like the show is very popular. It's won a lot of awards and like canceling it now, or I guess a couple months ago, but you know, canceling it in this time frame seems like a really bad timing because like Little Women just came out and it's like critically and audience acclaimed everyone loves it and, th and the thing is like with and with an e or like little women or whatever it's like there's nothing really like this on tv right now like if you're making a show about kids who found out they have superpowers like you're one of a thousand shows but it's like there's no show like and with an e and then, like I said, Little Women just came out, which is kind of somewhat similar, you know, not exactly the same, but you know, I feel like canceling Anne with an E now is a really poor choice just because like now is the best time to have like more Anne with an E coming out. Why would you cancel it now? There's definitely a good chance that it could get renewed. And I certainly think it should get renewed just because we need more shows like this, you know? I mean, every show is just the same show nowadays, you know? It's all it's all the same type of stuff, but Anne with an E, you know, maybe it's not your cup of tea, that's fine. But like, let's be honest here, the show can't be that expensive to make, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, you can't, it can't possibly be that expensive. So like, come on, what are you doing? Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know what's your favorite part of the video or what video I should do next or just say hi, that's fine too. Follow my dog on Instagram, Charlie Meets Pumpkin. And above all else, everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.